Good morning, needleworkers. I um, hope you're having a wonderful Friday. We are uh, kicking off and getting ready for a punch needle class tomorrow, a beginner's punch needle. Um, we will have another one coming up November 30th, so if you're interested in a punch needle class, check out our website, of course, shepherdsneedle.com. You'll find all of that in our notes below. We have brought on a, new, a sweet young lady that is helping us with our show notes so we can get things caught up. I was trying to create a file to put over on our Freedom Friday Facebook page page or Facebook group and um, just I don't have the time uh, I want to dedicate my time to uh, serving you our customers our viewers answering questions and just being available um, so um, one through four of our floss tube has all the show notes in so if there's any information you should be able to grab it there Miss um, Lala will be finishing up this coming week and getting show notes in five six and of course this is our number seven so welcome welcome back if you've watched before I don't um, like I always say I want to do my best to keep these are 30 minutes or under I feel like that hits you for your lunch hour possibly or just not um, making it easy and quick to view um, I watch quite a few when I have time and so I want to um, give everybody space and time to watch others as well as myself so again I'm gonna just get started with I'm gonna rev actually excuse me I am gonna start this is really I'm trying to devote this video this boss tube to stitch like stitches and finishes and punching and show you some different um, ideas and we're going I'm going to kick off with um, I guess prim stitching is what I would call it uh, or prim punching these two items I'm going to show you are going to really be prim pun, uh, punching excuse me and how uh, I have incorporated a um, an item from Hobby Lobby and an item from uh, a flea market to do the finishing for these. I will also use things like this for cross stitch. Um, so just when you see what I'm showing you, uh, think about when you're out there looking, whether it's Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whether you're flea marketing, whether you're rummaging through grandma's things, um, you know, whatever. Be careful that because there may actually be some things in your home that you can use and not have to purchase or look for to incorporate some of your stitched or punched pieces on. So my first one I'm going to show you is um, Top Hat Sheep from Teresa Kogut. This is a punch needle piece. Um, everything that I show you we have in stock. There will be one item that we don't and I'll tell you why when we get there. But this is Teresa's Top Hat Sheep. Okay, and I kind of, I can't, this I consider prim. This little block came from Hobby Lobby. So, um, let me just show you right quick. If you need a skew, there you go. Um, but, and I just attached, and because it wasn't quite long enough to make it look balanced, I just added some little decoration on each side just to make it look balanced. Um, and the next one is going to be Peace, I believe this one's called Peace Dove. I do have a new computer, so I'm hoping that we get better pictures. So this is Peace Dove. And what I chose to do with Peace Dove is I did go flea marketing, antiquing, junking, and I found this great little shelf. And it was just perfect to put Peace Dove on. So there's a couple of prim finishes, and like I said, you can do cross stitch or punch needle on these type of things. Um, so next I'm going to go to a couple of things um, that, the first one is going to be Happy Holidays. It's a little red truck, and I take my pieces and take them with me. Um, and so this is a little Hobby Lobby frame. It's in the Christmas section, and this is what I did with the little red truck. And I had my framer, Mr. Bob, cut me a little mat so I could just finish it out and make it look really cute. And these, what I like about these type of things is they stand on their own. 
so you don't have to have an easel for them, um, which makes it really, really nice. This is Cardinal um, in a Kalula, something like that, Berries Tree. And this is another Hobby Lobby find right now. You can get everything that I've showed you that's got Hobby Lobby to it is available right now at your Hobby Lobbies if people haven't bought them. So this is the little sign. I believe this is in the Thanksgiving fall area. And this picture will not do this cardinal justice, but it was perfect for this piece because it was just small enough for me to leave just a little bit of a black border to really just make it pop. And so when people walk in the door and see this, they're just in awe of how pretty it is. Okay, so then I'm going to move over to a little bit more, I guess, elegant finish, I guess you would say, or um, proper finish. Old time um, bell pull, you know, years ago, a lot of people did bell pulls. And this is Little House Needleworks ABC, and we have posted this on our Instagram yesterday, but this, we changed the lettering on this into a red. A model stitcher stitched this and it was beautiful but we could not see the white. So I went ahead and changed everything and this red is um, Cherry Cobbler from Classic Color Works. We used all the call for threads except for Cherry. We added Cherry Cobbler into the mix. And then we also, I also added a few little snowflake buttons little beads to where those little single things are, where those little four um, stitches are. Here I added just some beads to give it some dimension. So, and this is on a sparkle fabric, if you can see that. It is really, really pretty. And this was finished by Miss Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. And I've always amazed at her work and how elegant it is and the cording that she does. So that takes us to a little bit more of a um, elegant finish, I guess. It would be for back in the day when they did a whole lot of bell pulls. A lot of things were done, needlepoint, um, cross stitch. You've seen a lot more bell pulls back then than you do now. So I thought that was a perfect little way to finish that piece and uh, show it to you. There is currently um, Lynette from Homesteading on the Homefront. Excuse me, I dropped my book. Has got a sow going in the book, Home for the Holidays. We have this in stock. Um, and what I wanted to show you, I believe the sow is anything in the book to stitch. Last year, she did the red bird, and I put some little bookmarks in here so I could get to them pretty quick. She did the red bird. Okay, so I stitched this on 40 count pair over two um, with the called for colors. And to me, this is a little elegant stitch. I did put it on a Hobby Lobby basket. I believe they're still available. Um, and so I added in the original book, Joy is Noel, there was a sampler that had this one and this one in it. And then I added some more motifs uh, to fill it in. I also changed the wording on this. It's going to be hard to see uh, on the video, but it is Sing Praises Unto Our Savior. So I'm going to try to get that. I have this um, charted. So if you're interested, and it's at shepherdsneedle.com, I'll be glad to share that with you. And then another finish outside, or excuse me, another finish in this book is um, the stockings. And I can't, I'm not going to show you all of them uh, on the pages, but this one is, is the poinsettia stocking, and there are five of those. And so I'm going to show you, we have all five as models. Now I've done just a little beaded at, uh, beads for the hangers, uh, but I'm just going to show them to you briefly. There is one. These were stitched by a shop model stitcher and finished by Miss Susie. 
They're all gorgeous. There was actually at that time a fabric that everybody sought after for the backing of these, and I believe it was I believe it was in the in the it's in the book the information, um, and then we t dot it to give it a little bit more of a vintage look. So kind of give you an idea. So they're very pretty. So if any of y'all are still contemplating what you're wanting to stitch out of that book, maybe that would encourage you to do those. And then in the original um, book, there was the Christmas Garden. This beautiful piece right here. And we have it on display. It belongs to one of our customers. And I'm going to show you. It is very, very pretty. And she wanted to be able to use it more than just have it to just say Christmas Garden. I'm trying to get that off of there for you. And she changed Let Love and Friendship Fill Your Days. Let Grace and Virtue Guide Your Ways. Um, so, which for the sale, I'm not for sure that you would want to take on this big of a piece. Um, but I did want to show it to you because it is so beautiful. And her word changing, her little verse is so sweet and just dedicated to her family um, she's actually put she has three children um, so she's put her and her husband's monograms in there you know, along with their three children Oops, ooh, good save so um, those are some options um, for that sale for Lynette she's home studying on the home front um, while I'm on sales there is currently the sale fund 19 uh, code that you can use with us that includes the um, praiseworthy stitches uh, designs. Leslie at Fat Cat Flossing is doing Carols on the Square starting October the 1st. I'm waiting on fabric, so hopefully I will be doing the new Simple Gifts Halloween. Um, I've chosen fabric and I'm waiting for it to come in. Our uh, Sal Fun 19 includes all praiseworthy stitches that we have, charts, fabrics, threads. We're welcome. You're welcome to call us and we will work with you um, on colors of fabrics and whatever you want. And then playing with Jack's sale is still going and we're honoring that Sal Fun 19 coupon code on it too. So um, there will be show notes below within the week, maybe even pretty quick. Um, and so if there's anything that I've talked about and you want to um, need, need the information, just look at our show notes. And then I want to show you, I'm going to jump over and show you one more finish. And this particular finish, um, I cannot... The chart is no longer available. And so I'm going to have to make sure that I hold something here. Okay. So this is an old Sampler Cove Huswife. And I just wanted to talk about from prim to simple to elegant to proper to all in between. And this was stitched by me. The original one was done in a red. The whole thing was done in a red. And I chose blue, I think it's bluegrass from Gloriana Silks. And this is a variegated floss. And so this is what you see. If you can find this, I can't remember the name, but if you put in Sampler Cove, um, I occasionally see it on eBay, but very seldom. And then this finishing was done by a Miss a Lady. She is on Facebook, Sandy. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but... Um, if any of you have talked or done elegant finishing, and so it's kind of crazy. This is a little pin cushion, okay? This is a little pleated pocket here, and in that little pleated pocket goes, excuse me, I've got a little thread holder, a little pair of scissors that I made it a beaded bob to go with, some old vintage thread winders and let's see and this pockets so they're there it's pocketed to where these will fit right in here i'll just take them out so i don't drop them okay and then this this is just like exquisite to me this does button and makes a pocket here but this is woven ribbon 
or this ribbon is, is blue grass from Gloriana Silks and Sandy wove it just like the instructions were done for the pattern itself and then up here is a little needle book with wool pages and these were made years ago my understanding for um, sailors that went off to sea and they were kind of had supplies in them to put their buttons on uh, all kinds of little things that they would need while they were away from their wives to finish their selves. And so, and then this little thing just rolls up, and which trying to do it, and then has a beautiful little piece where you tie. So, I, oops, I pulled this out of my stash to show you, or out of my uh, things at home that I can't have, um, I can't get the chart anymore. But this is, to me, this is kind of where you go over the top of elegance because uh, it, it's not hard stitching, but the finishing is just exquisite. And that is so uh, precious to me. I'm hoping that somebody in, down the road from my lineage of people will keep that and keep passing it on because um, I did enjoy stitching it. So I'm going to uh, wrap up here within the next few minutes, I believe. Uh, we did have, um, actually I'm going to show you, we've got the new Prim Stitch Punch Needle Magazine. And I love the pumpkins on the front, so we will probably try to get those punched. And then really my favorite piece is, I, I love fall and I love pumpkins. Um, and this, it's, the whole book is exquisite. But I love this one from Teresa Cogut, the white pumpkin. I think that's just beautiful. I haven't had a chance to pull the, the actual colors yet, so I know they're going to be what I would call yummy and would um, definitely want to punch. Um, we did have um, a winner, so I'm going to move to these. Our winner for our video number, let's see, I believe it was number five, um, was uh, the drawing was for Easter Parade, and the winner for that was Rain Jude. So Rain, if you will email me at ann at shepherdsneedle.com and give me your your address and the information that we need, we'll get this off in the mail to you, and congratulations for winning. Our um, next um, drawing was for what, what was your favorite holiday? That was the question that was asked in number five, I believe. We didn't have a drawing for number six, so we went back to number five, um, and that and that question was, what was your favorite holiday? And in, and I read every one, uh, so, and I, I hope I replied to everyone, to, and I was just, I really over static at what you guys came back with. Um, there was lots of holidays mentioned, but the top named holiday was Thanksgiving. And I don't think we could have, on the poll, I, I, I believe that it should be, um, a, it is for me a blessing every day to be thankful and grateful. And so with that, I thought it was just since y'all came back with Thanksgiving being the top winner of holidays, we're going to do three giveaways this video. And so you're going to tell, or if you want to, you know, you can't, your comment is going to be, what am I thankful for? I need to know what you are thankful for. We're going to have three winners. Uh, we won't select, I mean, we'll just pick, pick one of these and mail to you. So there's no specific one that you may get of the three that will win. And the first one is Hands on the Holidays, excuse me, Hands on Designs, sorry, uh, Give Thanks. Miss Kathy's a wonderful designer. And then another Blackbird, Give Thanks. And then Annie B's Folk Arc. And this one is called Thankful Pumpkins, but the wording does say Give Thanks right there. So those three will be what we will do in the drawing. So let me know what you're thankful for. And uh, we're getting close to a closing, 
photos up here and I wanted to give you some information on our spring retreats of 2020. What we do for our um, retreats and our classes is that we will ask you to contact us, respond. Once registration is open, please respond via email. We need to go with time dated emails to be fair to everyone but our spring retreat dates are going to be April the 2nd through the 5th uh, for the first one and the 16th through the 19th so these are our spring dates we will have information on it going out okay so this will post today is Friday the 20th so when you see this, it is going to be Saturday the 21st. Our registration will open up next Saturday the 28th. Uh, so be watching for our email tomorrow of the uh, timestamp of when registration will open. And then once it opens um, on that 28th, you will want to respond if you want a spot. We do a, um, this one, Pretty much most of mine are stitch, relax, unwind, and renew. I just we have plenty of stuff to stitch. I have plenty of stuff to stitch. Occasionally we do a little um, something to stitch if you want to. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. The spring retreat will not have anything. It is for you to do exactly what I'm posting about it, and that is stitch relax, unwind, and renew. We all need to disassociate ourselves with the world at times and just close out and renew our minds and rest and refresh our bodies. And that's what I like to offer to you as the stitcher. We have girls, um, excuse me, we have young ladies anywhere from the range of 18 all the way up into uh, probably their 80s that attend our retreats. It's a wonderful facility. Everything is in one building. Your rooms are in one building. You eat in the same building. You stitch in the same building so you don't have to go anywhere. And I feel like that's a perfect um, offering, especially to the elder which includes me because it's um, as I age it gets a little bit difficult uh, for some obstacles but we want to make sure that you're safe and secure you do share a room with one person so your room has in you individually get to set your thermostat or your heat and cool in your room um, you're provided nice queen size beds with bathrooms in each one of the rooms um, so everybody uh, gets a queen size bed and some privacy. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and we want to thank you for watching if this is your first time. If you're coming back, uh, pretty really thank you. If you're giving me your time, it is truly grateful and I am truly thankful to have all of you. Um, if you have any questions, look at our show notes below once they're posted. Also, um, if you need to contact me, um, Ann at shepherdsneedle.com. If you have any questions, give us a call. Everything is on our website. We do have lots of new product that comes in daily. And so if you're looking for new things, if you want to know what's new, check out our website. And we want to sign off and say thank you and have a wonderful weekend.